Hey, I'm Josh. Today we're going to be talking about the Topping DX7S DAC amp. There's a lot to cover on this particular product, so there are things that I left out about it uh, just for the sake of time, like DSD, for example. That's a topic that I could talk about on this, but I'm not going to. That being said, let's go ahead and talk about the DX7S. So it's got a very anodized aluminum feel to it, just rock solid. Uh, the build quality on here is like the machining is very, very impressive. The tolerance of everything is great. Um, I, I have zero complaints when it comes to the build quality of this. It is an extremely well-built unit. On the front, we've got a quarter inch output, a balanced output, a screen that's capable of displaying your inputs, your outputs, your volume level, your bit rate, and your volume, and a volume knob that is an infinite scroll wheel. Mm, makes that satisfying sound. Now, I haven't bought this yet because I am using this on a desk, but you can actually buy a remote separate uh, that actually matches with the color scheme and controls, I think, the volume and the input selection on here. And I'll leave a link to that as well as this down below. Now on the back, you have a power switch, power cable input, and the power supply is actually built internally. That probably adds to the weight and heftiness of this. An AES input, a coaxial input, USB input, and an optical input. Uh, then you have a coaxial out, left and right RCA out, and a left and right balanced output. Now I've personally been using this for a number of months, actually. Uh, I've had this thing since way back when I had the Audio GD NFB one amp and uh, I was using it as a stack then. Now I'm currently using the THX 789 as a stack with uh, using the RCA as an additional output and also using a Shelly Labs Enog 2, which we'll talk about in a second, as additional outputs to test various amplifiers. All right, so I'm gonna read through some of the functionality of this particular device just so I don't forget anything and I wanna hit on everything that's important. So you've got input selection, volume adjustments. You can select between headphone out, DAC out, or both. Volume knob works down from zero, zero being the highest volume, and I think it goes down to negative 100. And it's got automatic standby. You can do a few things like making the screen a little bit more bright, a little bit less bright. Uh, now, pretty much since I got this thing, I've tested just about every headphone that's come in. So this includes the Alex, the Clear, the Sundaras, uh, the 1990s, the uh, really just pretty much every headphone. Now the amplification part of it, while it's very even and uh, pretty dynamic, very, very clean, it's not all that powerful. So both the single-ended and the balance put out about half of a watt at 32 ohms. So definitely not the most powerful amp, especially not the most powerful amp in an amp DAC combo. I think at this price range, that would go to the Jotunheim, which we'll talk about a little bit near the conclusion. Now with the DAC section, this is really what you're paying the bulk of the money for. So as far as I can tell from just my ears, this DAC is very clean. Like I have absolutely zero complaints from the DAC portion of this device. And it also measures well enough to satisfy the people who are into that. So overall, even though this device ends up doing a lot, it is actually pretty simple in terms of functionality and what you would actually use it for. And I wanna talk real quick about the application of it and what other products I might recommend over it and where I recommend this. So at the end of the day, this is basically just a luxury DAC. Um, you know, you do not need this to have great, awesome, amazing sound out of another DAC. Like the Grace S DAC, which is I was using before this, is just a micro USB to RCA out. That DAC is great. So for me, this is gonna go under the luxury category. And I would put it in a, albeit questionable realm of future proofing. And because of the price range stock when it's not on sale, although you can actually find it on Mastrop, I'll actually see if it's available and link it down below if it is. On Mastrop, I think they sell for like 370, which is a steal. Uh, but normally these go for around $500. And I can really only recommend this for a specific type of person, uh, but before I describe that type of person, I wanna talk about one of its competitors, the Jotunheim. So the Jotunheim is going to be basically the flipped version of this. This is an overpowered DAC with an underpowered amplifier. That's an overpowered amplifier with an underpowered DAC. And I don't mean power as an output, I just mean uh, measurements and capability of the DACs that are in the, those Jotunheims don't compete with the DAC in this, if you are basing that off of measurements at least. If you are going for a single permanent unit that you are only going to have one and you just want a USB input, uh, the Jotunheim is probably the way to go because you have a lot better of an amplifier built in. And if you just wanna have that one piece of equipment, that is probably the option that I would lean towards. Now, where I recommend this for is a more specific person. So it's gonna be the person who is planning on upgrading to very nice gear in the future. Perhaps you're waiting for the THX789 to drop again on Mastrop and you wanna buy a good DAC for it in the meantime. This is kind of what I recommend. This is something that you could buy for the versatility and the quality of the DAC, 
while still being able to use the headphone output in the meantime until you upgrade to whatever your final stage of amplification is or your next stage at least. And that's really the kind of the key individual that I recommend it for. There are others who might want it for various reasons, but you'll know that if you are one of those people. So now we're gonna talk about the other aspect of competition, which is basically separating the DAC and the amplification portion. So this is a Gashelli Labs Enog 2. It's a balanced DAC. Uh, this is a, a little bit more simple of a device because it is just a DAC. It doesn't include an amplifier at all. This clocking in at $200, then let's say the JDS Labs Atom, which is another 100. That's 300 bucks. That's $70 cheaper than this. You're getting a very clean sound and signal out of this. And then that amplifier is a lot better than this amplifier being not only cleaner, but twice the power. Now, fairly enough, that's not exactly apples to apples because this is a balanced DAC and I recommend getting it for a balanced amplifier because that is what this thing is built for. And you know, what it really comes down to on this device, this is not something that I can overall do a strong recommendation for a large amount of people. I don't think it's gonna fit most people's needs in audio, but it may fit a few. But if you are the person who enjoys the versatility of the inputs, the stellar build quality, and the uh, various options for the output selection, this might be the right device for you. For example, me, I'm always plugging new stuff into my system, testing and referencing against this and that, and this is a great option for me. That being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Now, I've actually moved the disclaimer portion to the end of the video, and I think I will continue to do that because uh, I think it disrupts the feng shui and, and smoothness of the intro. So I do wanna send a huge thank you to Topping for sending this out for a review. They are allowing me to keep it, but other than that, they are not paying, asking, or otherwise trying to influence me to say anything good or bad. All thoughts and opinions are my own. Like always, you can find links to everything I was talking about down below. And if you really want to support what I do to get early access to videos exactly like this one, Patreon is always an option, guys. Thanks very much. My name is Josh, signing off.